Hello everyone, in this video I will show you the practical usages of User Datagram Protocol. User Datagram Protocol or UDP is a communication protocol used across the internet for time-sensitive transmissions such as video streaming. It speeds up the communication by not formally establishing a connection, it just sends the packages and it doesn't guarantee that the package will reach its destination. On the other hand, we have a TCP, trans Transmission Control Protocol, which establishes a connection and guarantees that the message will be delivered. HTTP is an example of a protocol that uses TCP as a transfer protocol, but now we're creating a chat application in which we use the user data and protocol. So as you can see here, I can send a message. This is my message and it gets delivered to other clients with my name. I can also send a message from this client and as you can see other clients receive this message and let's go to the movies. Sure. So today I will teach you how to create this application using only Java and JavaFX. Let's get started. So first thing we need to do is we need to create a server that will accept UDP packets from all the clients and forward them to all other clients. For that, so we need a um, byte array to store incoming messages. Uh, we need a port on which the server will run and we need to create a datagram socket. So a datagram socket basically creates everything for us. We just need to send packages and we do not need to worry about how the operating system and how your computer will send that packet to the network. So we initialize it here. We create a datagram socket on this port. We will also have a list of users to which we'll forward the messages and this address will be localhost. Of course, if you were sending it over the network, you would need an IP address or, or a domain name, but we are only using localhost for now. And in the main method, this is actually very simple. We just start the server on this port. Well, actually, we already started it here. And now we need to be in a while loop and serve user requests. How do we do that? So for every iteration, we create a packet. We say socket receive the packet. And that is basically listening on the socket. Every time we get a packet in every iteration, if there is a packet, we will get that packet and save it in here. And then we can extract the data and in here we create a new string from the data that we got so we get the byte array and we transfer it to a string we print the string out and this if the message contains in it that is just my way of initializing the users so every user when they log on will send an initialized message and we will add the user port to our users list. And every other message will be a normal message. So basically this piece of code will run. We get the user port. So from the packet, we can get the port from, the, from which the user sent the message. We convert our string again to bytes because we can only send bytes and we forward it to all other users. So if forward port is not equal to user port, create the packet and then we use socket send. So from the socket point of view, we only use socket send and socket receive. That is the power of UDP protocol. If you were using a TCP protocol, it would be um, more complicated. It's not hard, but it would be more complicated. In UDP programming, you just receive and send. That's basically all you have to do. And that's our server. Let's check out the client. Well, the client is also a server because it needs to receive and send messages, but let's call it a client because a user is using it. So me or your friend or you will be using this application. So we call it a client. We also need a socket. We create the socket and we don't need a port 
because this method initializes it to an available port. In the server, we pass the port argument so all clients know where to send the messages and now we just don't care about the port. After that, the address stays the same, it's the local host. We have an identifier, so we'll change this to your name. And we need a server port because we need to know the address of the server. And this is JavaFX, so we need a text area in which we will print the messages and we need a text field which will be like an input box. In our main method, we start another thread. Now we need two threads. We need one thread for sending the messages and one thread to rece for receiving the messages. Because if you were doing it in one thread, you would need to send the message, then receive the message. And basically you would have to wait until you were done sending the message to receive the message. So we just start a new thread. Let's go to the client thread. And this thread basically does while true receive package. When you receive the package, add it to the text area. So this thread is concerned with receiving packages and adding text on the screen. That's, that's basically it. And after we start that thread, we send the initialized message, which I said. So basically just init and your identifier. And if we go to the server, you can see that we are looking for, for basically just in it. And let's go back to the chat client. So after we send that message, we go to the JavaFX, which is launch and we launch the GUI. After that, the program comes here to our start method. And we just create the message area. We set the width, set editable to false input box as well. And then this is the interesting part. So we have the input box basically set on key pressed. Um, so every time you press enter, you will send the message. You, as you can see here, if event get code is equal to key code enter, we will send the message. How do we send the message? So we extract the text from the input box and we update the message area as well with our own message. Then we convert our this text, we convert it to byte array, we clear the input box so it's empty, and we just send the package. That's basically it. One thread for receiving, and this JavaFX main thread will be for sending the message, and then we just create the scene. So let's start the application. First thing we need to run is the server, so we run this main method from the server. And after the server is running, we can run the client. So I'm using Gradle. I'm using Gradle to run to run this. If you're using Maven, it's it's similar. So in here, I go to Gradle application run, and then it saves it in here. So let's run the first client. Let's change the name. Let's run the second client and Jeff. Third client. Also, if you want to, uh, if you want to run multiple instances, you need to go to your configuration, modify options, and allow multiple instances. That's how I can run three clients at the same time. So we have the server running, we have our clients running, and we can start sending the messages. As you can see, so if I send it from here, these two get the message if I send it from here they get the message and if I send it from here movies all other people get it and they can chat until they want I hope this was helpful if you have any messages feel free to contact me in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video bye